Low disk space, it can affect all of us. What can we do about it? Let's talk to Wes at the bench. Hey Wes, good to see you again. So, low disk space. Mm -hmm. This can be something that affects many people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and if it does, what are some of the symptoms? Well, one of the first things that you're going to notice are performance issues. Performance mm -hmm. issues are one of the things that we kind of, we kind of just through our normal interaction with a computer, we notice before anything else. Is, is this like what, what it takes longer for something to 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 load up? You like, got it. Like like I, I go in there and I want to uh, uh, open up one of those myriad of social networks, and it just takes forever. Or or I'm trying to download. Uh, a program or a file, and it just seems to take forever. Yeah. That's, that's what we're talking about, right? It, it could, it, it very well could be. Um, you know, you're talking about things like web browsers, which is certainly an application that could, really, that could be slow internet too. Uh, but if you think about uh, like launching up an application within your operating system, uh, maybe you're launching something like, uh, you know, not necessarily anything resource intensive. I was going to say Photoshop, but that's going to need a lot of resources to begin with because it's mm -hmm. a pretty intensive application. But it could be something as simple as a game. Maybe a game that you've you've been playing for a while and you load it up and you notice that it takes a little bit of uh, time from the time you click an icon uh, mm -hmm. on your desktop uh, to the time that you know you actually see it on the screen. Uh, if you're dragging windows around and you're trying to rearrange your windows, you mm -hmm. might notice like your cursor kind of stops and or stutters maybe? and skips. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so uh, pretty much things like that. Performance issues are mm -hmm. one of the things that we as end users or end users in general are gonna notice because while we're working with our computer every day uh, and uh, w you know one of the things that we notice is the fact that hey something's changed I don't know what it is mm -hmm. but it's just not working as good as it used to yeah, like uh, I tried to load a, a, a file from Word I mean mm -hmm. that, that's very simple sure. and it just seemed to take forever yeah well if you it, it, that it, we need to keep in mind too that if you are downloading something off the internet uh, that could really just be internet speed, but if you're talking about uh, if we, let's say, unplug the network cable and anything that's happening locally on the machine, uh, if we're still getting slow transfers, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, if you're or or if you're trying to copy a file, let's say for an external drive onto your um, you know your main computer there, uh, and you get so far, and maybe it tells you there's not enough space on the drive, you know. So errors are oh. another thing that can, can occur, okay. and errors can happen a lot, you know. Right, right. So so an, an error could be uh, like when you get that free that, that I call it freeze page, but you know <laughs> that's because I'm from a, Iowa. So anyway, uh. <laughs> but, but it says error. You have an error. You try again. Yeah. Or, or retry. We're talking like that's what we're talking. Like. Yeah, sometimes, I, and I tell you what, and I'm going to raise my hand, I'm just as guilty as this, sometimes we see, we'll see an error and we just kind of click OK and we just ignore it. Mm -hmm. And um, then you don't really know exactly what is going on. Right. So um, one of the things that's uh, really good is to, if you do happen to click through those errors or it flashes up there and it goes away, uh, there is a nice little program here in Windows that you can kind of gain some insight to those errors. Mm -hmm. If you happen to do like I do, you go Jiminy Click It, you're not paying attention, you click OK, and now you you know, again, he leads back into those performance issues. Well, let me show you here in the operating system where I'm talking about. Windows has got this cool little uh, component. If I just right click on our start button here um, and we launch up Event Viewer. Oh, sure. So Event Viewer is a really good place mm -hmm. that we can uh, kind of take this and we can look through things like our uh, event logs and logs that are related to our system. Uh, and it takes a second here. In fact, that right there is a telltale sign of performance issues. Do you right. see how it's taking? And I'm getting a not responding mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. uh, that not responding bonding here is letting me know oh, something's not quite working right uh, here yeah. and um, yeah so uh, you, you can kind of see that we're already kind of seeing signs of that right and we might even see that there were even more errors that we, were, we weren't even aware of sure here yeah so what causes all this what well, there, you know, there, it, it can be just basic neglect of your files in general. And what I mean by that is not that you, you, you know so much that we're oh I haven't paid attention to my files, but more so that maybe you're accumulating a lot of files. I mean, let's face it, Zach, we live in a day and age where we deal with a lot of high definition video. Mm -hmm. uh, like for instance, any of our directors uh, here at IT Pro TV that are behind the camera can tell you how much it can be a pain to deal with a file that's 40 gig gigabytes in size, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that one file gets let, let, let's say we do a little bit of editing. Let, let's do a little real world scenario. 
show here. Mm -hmm. We do a little bit of editing, editing to one of our shows, right? right. And, and I'm not sure exactly how big the files are. I'm just taking a guess, you know, 10 gigs in size, right? Uh, and then I go to Titus and I say, you know, the, the, you know, the director for this show, and I say, hey, you know what? I think we're going to throw that video out and we're going to reshoot it. You know, maybe I, just, I was having a bad hair day or I just couldn't speak plain English. <laughs> and uh, let, let's say, you know, he says, okay, well, I'm going to mark that for deletion, uh -huh. but then we never come back to it, right? So we start accumulating excess files and maybe we forget about the fact that they're there. Well, you don't delete them. We, we just leave them in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you here on my computer what I'm talking about. I've got an example here uh, of uh, some files that I do. And again, I'm just as guilty. This isn't a, uh, really isn't the blame game. But if I open up File Explorer here uh, and I go into uh, my Documents folder, you're going to notice right here, notice that these are a couple of ISO files. Now, right. don't worry so much. That's just something that we can apply an operating system to our hard drive. But notice the size of them, right? This is 4.6 gigs. This is 5.1 gigs Those just in a large. single file here. So it kind of shows yeah. you that I forgot about these. I, I put them on the computer, and guess what? I, I left them there. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is we leave those files there, they start to accumulate, and that becomes a problem, you know. So just just a lot of uh, files that maybe you could delete and you could free some space up, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that, that can cause it. Uh, other things are like unused programs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you're like me, but, uh, we, you know, here's, here's a situation on our mobile devices, right? I don't know if you're like me where you... Oh, this little productivity app looks great. I, I don't know what it is. You download it, you use it for a second, you're like, eh, it really wasn't that good. But here's another one, and here's another one, and here's another one, and but then I don't go back them. on it, and you leave them. Well, the right. same thing can happen here uh, on your uh, your machine. You download a program, mm -hmm. you for whatever reason you don't use it, mm -hmm. and then you never double back on it to maybe you know uninstall it. Yeah, uh, other things too that happen a lot, uh, your operating system keeps temporary files, applications keep temporary files, Windows keeps temporary files such as a Windows update, uh, and for the most part it should kind of flush those files out but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, your applications, when they have these temporary files on a reboot, they really should just flush them out. Sometimes they don't. Uh, and uh, those can be really, really excessive. And you can have that, and, and they a lot of times they get stored in what's known as a user profile. So the more users you have on one computer, each user has a dedicated location to oh, where sure. if I was to maybe get rid of these files, well, if we've got four other users that have accounts on these machine, this one machine, then they also could have run the risk of having too many files uh, likewise too. Uh, like I said, Windows Update, it can generate a lot of files in the background as well as, uh, for instance, the Windows Store apps. Uh, it's very easy to gain app, uh, get apps just like in a mobile uh, environment today on your phones. Well, Windows Store apps, you can download them, you use them for a little bit, you kind of forget that they're there. And over time, again, you just start to accumulate a lot of that space without looking at uh, and really kind of gaining insight into why your drive is losing storage space. And before you know it, you start running into performance issues. Mm -hmm. uh, one big one is, you know, another symptom that I forgot to mention that we need to mention is um, your computer won't print. That's right. Uh, so your pre your your uh, operating system goes mm -hmm. through this process where it actually takes uh, the print job, mm -hmm. whatever you're sending to the printer, and it writes it to the hard drive before it sends it to the printer. Well, if you try to print and that doesn't happen, you might even get an error that says not enough disk space mm -hmm. and the print spooler server shuts down and can't do its job. So these are some of the symptoms and those are some of the causes that we definitely have to be aware of. Well, from here, my friend, <laughs> <laughs> what are our solutions? Because, I mean, I, I know it can all add up. It can all build up and, and things we're not even aware of. What, 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 is, what is the solution? Best? Well, there's some uh, automated approach and there's also some of the manual approach. You've got to kind of be a detective and go on the hunt um, sometimes. Let, let me show you one of the first things here. Uh, one of the best uh, little uh, solutions to this, I'm just going to open File Explorer from the taskbar, click on the little folder icon, and I love the, the, the uh, hierarchical view here because if you select uh, this PC mm -hmm. over in the left-hand side, notice mm -hmm. how uh, my hard drive is red. Uh, yes. The space here is red. It's it telling is. me that I have literally one megabyte left <laughs> oh, uh, off of a very small drive, by the way. It's only 60 gigs, but it's, it's for purposes of demonstration. Uh, but if I right-click on that uh, drive and I choose Properties, 
I can come to the location here. You could go to tools, but right here, notice it's telling me what the use space is, what the free space is, not yes. much left. So we got to keep an eye on this, but then I can also use this uh, little icon, this little button right here, and it's Windows Disk Cleanup. And uh, I, I clicked it and it kind of run really fast there, uh, but you can see that there are plenty of things. Notice it says you can use this to free up, and this is only telling me about 8.3 megabytes worth of information. So right. I can see right away that even if I do run this and I put all these check box or make sure all the check marks are here, it's not. It isn't necessarily going to completely alleviate my problem here. But you can also, if you're a systems administrator, a Windows administrator, which usually is the first user on the uh, um, uh, that's created during the installation of the operating system, you can choose this option with a little shield icon, and that is to clean up system files. And what that's going to do um, is it could trigger the user account control and require you to say yes uh, because it's trying to elevate your privileges. But this is where you get, notice it, it says here, downloaded program files. I don't have any, so it, it increased a little bit, but not by much. And if we look through here, there's various things, temporary files, typically uh, .tmp files that it's looking for. Uh, and, you know, honestly, I don't even see uh, Windows um, updates in here. Sometimes you'll see Windows updates in here mm -hmm. uh, unless it didn't find anything. And then we just choose OK, and then it's telling you, you know, are you sure you want to permanently delete these files? So we'll give this a second to run, and you'll see that it's it's downloading, or I'm sorry, it's deleting these different locations. Mm -hmm. And depending on how much it finds, it could take a very long time. That one was relatively easy. So uh, this is a uh, Windows Explorer, or File Explorer as it's called now, been called for that for a while, is a dynamic uh, interface, so you can refresh it and you'll notice it really didn't do exactly what no, I wanted, right? So then at this point, we got to kind of go on a hunt. Uh, so for me, I, I showed you, we went into our, my documents, right? Yes. I could do a control A in here to select everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I could just right click on this and I can delete and notice that it says these are too big to recycle and I could say yes to this. And there, if we go back to this PC, you'll notice that I'm getting, ba I'm getting better. It's still not quite where I want it, yeah. but it is a little bit better. Other things that you could do, uh, you could manually delete some files inside of the, the user's profile. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you do have to kind of change the way you view um, uh, uh the files, if you will, inside a file explorer, and you need to make sure to do this next one that you have. You go to the View tab up here in File Explorer. It's the farthest tab from the right, right? And then you choose, or to the right, please. Uh, and then you choose Hidden Items because you can't see this by default. And then we're gonna go. We're gonna follow a path here. So uh, we're gonna go into Local Disk C. You're going to notice that there's a users directory here, and these are all the users. Don't mess with the default app pool and this this uh, kind of lighter one. That's a hidden file, mm -hmm. uh, and we don't want to mess with that. But I'm in the user profile of student01. This might be Zach. If it's your home computer, it might be W. Brian, first initial, last name, if I'm in a company environment. Yep. All right. And I can go in here and notice this little app data file mm -hmm. or folder. I mean, notice how it's kind of it's kind of lighter than the rest it of is. them. That's letting me know, giving me a visual indication that this is a hidden file. Uh, so we're going to go into app data and what I want to do is I want to go into local and I want to scroll down and I want to find a directory called temp and you can see it right here. There it is. Now if we go into temp you're going to notice there is just a ton. There's a few. An absolute ton mm -hmm. of these files and I can do a control A here. Uh, again just uh, deleting. Don't delete the temp file folder itself. Right. Not the temp folder itself. I got to kind of uh, definitely reiterate that. The files in the temp folder, you're going to see right. it says there's 103 items that disk cleanup didn't find. And I'm okay with that. It did, for the most part, it did its job, but it didn't do it so well enough that we can't, we still need to do something manually here. So you're going to see right here, I'll end up going ahead and just pushing permanent delete, uh, delete these files. There's going to be a couple of files in here that it's going to tell me that I cannot delete these. That's to be expected because even though it's a temporary file and it's it's taken a second here, notice it can't it can't uh, delete these files. Mm -hmm. These are okay. Leave them there. Not all of the files. So I said uh, chose the checkbox that said just skip this file skip them, right. because Skype. And this area debug file has to be in here. It doesn't contain any information right now, but it has to be in there. And there's an application that's expecting that temp file Got to it. be there. 
One of the final things I'm going to say that you can do, uh, remember that we talked about deleting applications yes. that maybe you didn't need. I can, show you, I, I can show you how to do that. So we're going to go back to our little start menu. We're going to right click on it and, and we're going to choose apps and features. Uh, you don't have to just start deleting all different, uh, all kinds of files, but or, or applications, excuse That's me. Right. Uh, but I'm going to take uh, this uh, Crystal Disk Info. I'm going to go ahead and choose to uninstall that. And it'll take a second. It'll uninstall it. And again, here's the user account mm -hmm. control. You've got to be an administrator to uninstall some of these programs. And we're going to go ahead and say yes. And I'm just going to walk through the uh, wizard real quick. And again, just a really quick demonstration of how we can do this. So for instance, maybe I've got like a text editor in here that I don't use because I'm going to go back to just a default install and use Notepad. Um, I could choose uninstall again. Uh, user account control fires off, lets me know, hey, that you need to be an administrator to do this. We approve it, and then we, you know, we just run through the installation. Uh, and it said, you know, do I want to keep custom settings? I'm going to say no again because then it'll leave remnants of that application behind. We'll choose close, and then last but not least, we just go ahead and we close down our uh, apps and features. And we get back in here and we choose this PC, and you'll notice oh, now that's more we, we've gone from one meg uh, left. Now we've got 37.3 gigabytes free. And these are just a couple of the space, you know, a couple of the locations that you can look and a couple of the things that you can do. If you happen to find that, you know, you have low disk space, delete unnecessary files, delete the temporary locations, mm -hmm. use Windows Disk Manage or Disk Cleanup. It's a perfect way uh, to go in and clean those temporary files out, including things like Windows. Windows updates, uh, and then from there, you know, you uh, you have a pretty good chance of regaining a lot of that storage space. Oh, you were wise, sir. <laughs> now, back in the days before you were born, we used a thing called defrag. It's still here. Defrag. Is that something we use too, or no? No. Uh, well, we're gonna we're gonna have an episode coming up talking about Good. file fragmentation, I and can't wait. Uh, it, it's definitely one of those ones that's gonna be important, especially when you do stuff like this where you've deleted large amounts of files. Uh -huh. You have these non-contiguous spaces now that are on your hard drive. Right. Uh, more mechanical, traditional mechanical drives. You don't have to worry about it with solid state drives because they the way they delete files is different. But if you've got a traditional spinning drive, mechanical I have drive, one at home. <laughs> then you're you're going to need to run a disk defragmenter. That, that would be something Good. that I would definitely run, but we're going to save that one for another episode. I can't wait. Thank you, Wes, and thank you for showing us about yeah. Low disk space. Appreciate it. Absolutely.